This is a naturalization ceremony where new Americans are sworn in as citizens of the United States. Here, they are granted the rights and freedoms of an American citizen. Today, there are many students in attendance to watch the ceremony. They are a part of a group called Citizenship Counts. It's an organization working to improve the civics education of students and empower their understanding of the importance of American citizenship. To make this happen, Citizenship Counts is working to host a community-based naturalization ceremony in the schools. By doing this, the students will have a first-hand experience of the process and the emotions that empower new citizens to participate in the democratic process. When you look at the statistics, four out of five college students at the top 55 colleges and universities in this country received a D or an F on a civics exam. We know that civics education is not being taught in the schools. And we really believe that students, if they don't understand what this country is all about and why it was formed the way it is and what are their rights and responsibilities as citizens, that we will lose our country. You know, we have to protect what is ours. That, that great um, history of immigrants who have come to this country and have chosen it as a country that stands by their ideals. Students say witnessing the ceremony was a unique opportunity. It helps them understand just how important this day was to the participants in becoming a U.S. citizen. I think it was just a wonderful opportunity seeing all these people and I don't know if I understood how much citizen, how much our citizenship is worth. It's so valuable. It was a great experience and it was nice seeing it. I know I do, yeah, yeah. Citizenship Counts founder Gerda Wiseman Klein stresses the importance of the freedoms many Americans take for granted. It's an incredible privilege. And that privilege carries with it a deep obligation. An obligation to speak on behalf of those who have never had the privilege of having freedom and also to speak to people who take freedom for granted, what freedom in, in, in living in this country means. Gerda is not only an important icon in the organization, but she will forever be a part of American history. Gerda Wiseman Klein is one of the last remaining Holocaust survivors. When Gerda was just 15 years old, Nazi Germany invaded her homeland of Poland. All the things as, as normal as a kid, and I thought my life would go like that forever. And then it was almost like a tsunami, you know. One day, a huge wave of hatred rose over Europe. Sunny, Sunday morning, 9-10, 1939, when the Germans took our part. The Nazis marched, marched in, and everything, you know, it was swept away, just like in a tsunami. My brother was taken away immediately. He was 19. I never saw my brother again. I was then separated from my parents. My parents' destination, Auschwitz. We were in the ghetto for a couple of years, so it was not you know, immediate, but I would say when you look back, it was almost like an immediate thing, you know. Gerda had a very strong relationship with her parents. The advice her father gave her before they were separated saved her life. It was a bitter day when I saw them. He asked me where my skiing boots were, and that was June. And I said, Papa, skiing shoes. And he said, I want you to wear them. And I said, Papa, skiing shoes in June. He says, yes, but I want you to wear them. And of course, you didn't argue with your father. I wore them and I feel that those boots were really instrumental in saving my life. I wore them for three years, you know, in every season. And then on the death march towards the end of the war, I had skiing boots. Gerda was forced to march 350 miles in the dead of winter with 2,000 other girls. Only 120 of them eventually survived. When you have nothing but only your life, you're holding on for as long as you can. Gerda's attitude and strength helped her survive. American soldiers were close to defeating the Nazis, but the Germans had one last trap set for the March survivors. They couldn't go on because um, the Americans were already there. We had American planes overhead and shooting. The front was there, you know, so 
they locked us in an abandoned bicycle factory and attached a time bomb so that we shouldn't be witnesses to their deeds, you know, and they discarded their uniforms and started to run away. But blessedly, the bomb did not go off. It was a horrible night of not knowing, having come so far. And then in the morning, the doors were thrust open and people were calling, if anyone is here, get out. The war is over. This was the news the women were waiting for. The war was over, and Gerda's new life had just begun. The first American soldier she saw was a man by the name of Kurt Klein, who would eventually become her husband. He looked at me like, like a young god. I knew there must be American. But of course, I didn't know what to expect. So, you know, we were well trained to identify immediately who we were. So I looked at him with some trepidation and said, we are Jewish, you know. For what seemed a long time, he didn't answer me. And then his own voice betrayed his emotion when he said, so am I. And that was an incredible moment. Gerda's story of heroism, survival, and strength taught her firsthand the benefits and responsibilities of being a U.S. citizen. Even now, after having been here more than 60 years, I sometimes stop and say, oh my God, it's, it's marvelous of what, what is happening, what you can do, what you can say without fear. Gerda founded Citizenship Counts for many reasons, one being the endless possibilities America holds for its people. I would really like to see every child in America to experience it and to feel the pride of what's being bestowed in their name on those who came because uh, most, of course, of the forefathers have come for the same reason, you know, uh, for freedom, for uh, religious freedom, uh, for freedom of oppression, uh, for a dream, for a better life, you know, the, the brightness of the American star, uh, the la land of possibilities that anything can happen here. Yeah. Citizenship Counts hopes to conduct ceremonies like this in schools instead of at convention centers. Former Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor led the ceremony and congratulated the new citizens. She stresses the importance of civic education in schools. Youngsters just grow up. They are citizens, most of them, automatically. They were born here, so it, it wasn't a process they had to go through. They didn't have to evaluate what it means to be a citizen. They already were, and when it's given to you, you don't appreciate what it means in comparison to what other people have in other nations, so they have to learn it. That's what school's all about. For Gerda, this is the fulfillment of a lifelong dream, started in her homeland of Poland, forged by an unfortunate turn of events in her young life. She sees her mission to empower young people to understand the responsibilities of being a U.S. citizen so that with education, our democracy can continue. Reporting for No. 99, I'm Samantha Boatman.